It's March 31, 1972, the height of the space race. The Soviet Union is desperate to outpace the Americans not just to the moon, but to our mysterious neighbor, Venus. The USR had been launching probes as part of the Venera program, one of the most ambitious planetary exploration missions ever attempted. Their goal? Land a spacecraft on Venus and survive long enough to collect data from its toxic atmosphere. On that day, Cosmos 482 was launched aboard a Molnia M rocket from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. It was meant to become Venera 9, a follow-up to the earlier successful Venus probes. But something went wrong. Instead of breaking free from Earth's gravity and heading toward Venus, the upper stage of the rocket malfunctioned. Cosmos 482 didn't go to Venus. It got stuck. Stuck in a highly elliptical Earth orbit, where it has remained for more than 50 years. Most spacecraft that fail like this fall back to Earth within a few years. But Cosmos 482 was different. It was built to survive Venus with one of the toughest heat shields ever created by Soviet engineers. Its descent module was armored, heavy, heat-resistant, designed to endure Venus's crushing pressure and 475C surface temperatures. That very durability is why it never burned up, and why it's still up there, silently orbiting Earth after five decades. In fact, back in 1972, just days after its failed launch, pieces of Cosmos 482 already began falling. A component detached and crashed in New Zealand, near the town of Ashburton. Locals found mysterious titanium spheres later confirmed to be from a Soviet spacecraft. Luckily, no one was hurt. And the core descent module? It stayed up. Until now. Now, 53 years after launch, Cosmos 482 his time is finally up. The descent capsule still in orbit is expected to re-enter Earth's atmosphere around May 10th, 2025. The U.S. Space Force and astronomers around the world are tracking it. It weighs about 500 kilograms or half a ton, and it's still largely intact. Experts believe it could survive re-entry just like it was designed to do on Venus. But should we be worried? The risk to human life is very low, says orbital mechanics expert Dr. Jonathan McDowell. Most of Earth is water or sparsely populated land. Still, it's an impressive event that said it's not entirely harmless, because no one can say exactly where it will land. Cosmos 482E's ray entry zone spans between 52 degrees north and 52 degrees south latitude. That's nearly two-thirds of the planet, from southern Canada to southern Argentina, from Europe and North Africa to Australia and Southeast Asia. That includes major cities like New York, Rome, Tokyo, Johannesburg, and Buenos Aires. But don't panic. The odds of it hitting a populated area are tiny. And most spacecraft burn up during re-entry. Even something as tough as Cosmos 482 would lose much of its mass as it slams through the atmosphere at 27,000 kilometers per hour. Still, if it does survive the descent, its hardened titanium shell could crash down somewhere. Fast. Cosmos 482 is just one example of a growing problem, space junk. There are over 36,000 tracked objects orbiting Earth right now, and hundreds of thousands more that are too small to detect. Dead satellites, rocket boosters, wrenches, screws, even flecks of paint. All of them are traveling faster than bullets. All of them pose a threat to functioning satellites, space stations, and yes, even Earth itself. Back in 1978, a similar Soviet satellite, Cosmos 954, crashed in Canada, 
spilling radioactive material from its onboard nuclear reactor. In 2021, China's Long March 5B rocket made headlines when it tumbled back to Earth, also uncontrolled. We've been leaving footprints in space for decades. Now, some of them are falling back. Here's the tricky part. Space law is still catching up. According to the 1967 Outer Space Treaty, nations are responsible for their objects in space, even after they've failed. But what happens when those objects come crashing down decades later? If Cosmos 482 damages property or injures someone, Russia could be held liable, even though it was launched by the Soviet Union. There's even a precedent. In 1978, Canada billed the USR $6 million for cleanup after Cosmos 954. The Soviets paid half. Will the same happen with Cosmos 482? Let's hope we don't need to find out. Cosmos 482 is a ghost from a bygone era. A time when superpowers launched metal into space with urgency and little thought for what came next. Now, in 2025, we're left watching the skies as that forgotten metal returns. Its fall is more than a space event. It's a reminder. A reminder that our history isn't just written in books. It's still orbiting above us. And sometimes that history falls. Whether Cosmos 482 burns up harmlessly or crashes in some remote part of Earth, one thing is certain. The space age may be young, but its debris is aging fast. And we'll be seeing more of it unless we start taking space junk seriously. <laughs>